Jim is very much, uh, has a heart that's very similar to as, as a church um, and yeah, hopefully is sort of wise and experienced in the things that we will certainly find ourselves up against and uh, <laughs> no pressure. So wise, didn't know the microphone <laughs> wasn't on. Certainly more bearded. So um, welcome. Yeah, I just want to share a few things really, you know, that uh, breakthrough can be like, can happen in a, just like that. Do you know what I mean? There can be a moment of breakthrough. I, I think the elephant in the room here right now is that you've got Andy and Liz going. Uh, well, they're staying but going. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and, and there's stuff going on. And, and, the, and those, of you, those of you that are here are thinking, well, what's next? I'm, 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 I'm guessing. That's what I, if I was you, that's what I'd be thinking. Um, what's next and where are we going? And I just want to encourage you um, that, that for those that press in and seek God, and do that together, a breakthrough can come in a, in a moment. And uh, just give me, I'll just give you a couple of examples of, of unexpected breakthroughs that can happen. Uh, so we, we planted a, a congregation very similar to this uh, on an estate. Um, and uh, I mean, I, I, maybe, I'm being, maybe I'm speaking out of turn. But sometimes it can feel a bit like, you know... Where is everybody? And, and, and uh, you know, are we a proper church? And all, all of those things that you can think when you're just a few of you and you're like pressing in for the break. So we, we, we were that. Uh, and, um, you know, and, and, and then you think, well, you know, how's it going to be? And it's a bit embarrassed if someone comes and all, all of those things. That can, anyone felt like that here? <laughs> Liar. Uh, so, so that's how, that's how it can sometimes feel. I just want to encourage you that in a, in a moment something can happen. So, so we were on an estate very similar to this estate, and uh, we'd started a, a community cafe. Um, it was a grand term, you know, the doors were open, the kettle was on. That's, you know, so, you know, a community cafe. And, and uh, a lady uh, came into this community cafe, and uh, we got to know her a little bit. And, uh, and then we invited her and some of her friends to a, um, a fun day that we did. Fun in, in, in commas. Um, we did our best, okay? We, we, had, we had, you know, a bric-a-brac sale, uh, you know, so everyone bought all their tat. Um, and, we, and, and then they all bought it from each other. Um, and we did a tombola. But by the way, tombola is a winner. Anyway, we did a tombola. You love you like a tombola. I can see it in your eyes. Um, and and we, di- we did it. We did a, the, the tombola. And then we did. Um, I, I had a friend of mine that, that had become a Christian at a camp that I run. Uh, that did come into some rap. Uh, I did some rap, and then I didn't know he was going to do this. So there's a room of around about 60 or 70 people uh, that come from this estate to, to basically, mainly, try and win the tombola. Uh, they were there, and then he said, anyone else want to sing? What are you doing, man? Um, uh, anyway, this lady that had come into the cafe grabbed grab the microphone and said, I'll, I'll have a go at singing this song, and we, we tried to find the backing track quickly, and she sang an Elvis Presley song. Daddy, please don't cry. I mean, it was a miserable song. I, 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 I'm a bit of an Elvis fan, but she sang it beautifully, all right, this lady. Anyway, tattoos everywhere, this lady. I mean, she's a formidable woman. And, and, um, and I, I then found her on Facebook. You've got to be good at stalking people in this sort of work. So I found her on Facebook and said, look, if we did an open mic night, would you come? And... and um, she, she said, oh, I don't know about an open mic night, but you know what? I've always wanted to do a charity event, and, um, but, but I, didn't, I don't know where to start. Could you help me? Yeah, sure. So anyway, she rocked up with an entourage of mums with prams uh, to, to, our, to our service the, before the service, and, and we chatted. And we, we ended up doing a big um, charity event, and we raised actually loads of money. I think we raised nearly 2,000 quid. Um, for Macmillan uh, Cancer re- um, uh, Charity. And, um, and anyway, so I've got to know her, this lady, Donna, her name. And, and, um, and then we were in the community cafe another time. So we've now, we're now mates, me and Donna. I'm still terrified of the woman, um, uh, but we're now sort of mates. Uh, and, and the entourage of, of other mums I was even more terrified of. And, uh, and anyway, she, she came. And, uh, and then in the cafe, she said, 
my kids have never been to the beach this, you know, haven't been out, we haven't been out off the estate this, this summer, any chance of a trip to the beach. She knew, uh, and I grew up not going, having holidays. I used, I used to go back to school after some holidays and I'd make up a holiday. Uh, and I'd, I had all sorts of people I met on holiday and I'd make it up so I could tell people I had a holiday. So she pulled on my heartstrings. And uh, so I took her kids and, so, and we ended up taking like a, a busload of people to the beach and we came back. And, uh, and then she came back to the cafe the next week and said, I, I want you to take us again. Can we go? We want to go to Barry Island, she said. And uh, yeah. And, and uh, <laughs> so, so, um, so and here's what I said. Here's what I said. I said, I'll tell you what. I said, and I was joking. I was genuinely joking. I said, I'll tell you what. If you come to church now every week for the next two months, I'm going to take you to Barry Island. And, uh, and sure enough, she came. And she found faith and got saved and got been part of our church. Um, and, um, and became a meaningful part of the community. What, what I'm saying is, just in a moment of just following a, following a moment, uh, being available to somebody, a breakthrough can come. On the back of that, that community grew and she brought all of her friends uh, and, and people started finding faith in Jesus in, in just this moment of a breakthrough. And uh, I just want to encourage you that that is, that, you know, if, if you are a community that are going to gather together and you're going to seek God and you're going to build community in this community, that breakthrough is around the corner. Okay, and be, be available, be ready for that kind of breakthrough. Be ready for God to speak. Because the other thing, God speaks to you, doesn't he? Yeah. So be, be ready um, for, for these moments where God speaks. I'll tell you another, another little breakthrough moment for us. Um, this is years ago now, it's like 20 years ago. I was in a meeting not dissimilar to this. We were worshipping in a not dissimilar way to we were just worshipping now. And the Spirit of God came and and came on me and in that moment as the spirit came on me you know, I, was, I sat um on my chair I couldn't I felt like I couldn't move there's a heaviness of the weight of God I didn't shake or fall over or anything like that but I just felt I couldn't move from this that place and I felt God say to me if you gather people I will show you what I can do in that moment and uh and I, you know you, you know when God there's a moment you know is sacred there's a moment you know when God said something and there's stuff going to follow. I, just, I do believe this is going to happen with you guys. And it is, is happening, has happened, and will continue to happen. But I feel like there's some breakthrough moments that God wants to unlock for you. And, and the key for it is to seek him. The key for it is to, is to be together. Do you know what I mean? I, I, in, the, in the worship time, I've had a picture of you sitting in a circle. And I'm nearly, I, I, I'm not bold enough, but I nearly got you all to move the chairs around. Um, but I, I, I want to encourage you to consider feeling like you're that. This is not a situation for somebody to be leading and you to be yes or no. This is a, this is a situation for a community to be together. And in, in a moment, you'll have a moment like I had when the Spirit came on me particularly to gather people I'll show you what I can do. On the back of that, we started a camp, a five-day camp called the Encounter Camp. And I, I want to tell you, at that Encounter Camp... We've seen HIV healed. We've seen deaf ears open. I've seen, I've seen someone with a, with a broken back healed completely such that they can't find any evidence of any scar tissue in the bone. We've seen, um, we've seen countless numbers of people find faith in Jesus um, and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. We've seen people have encounters with God that turn their lives around. There's one guy... A friend of mine called Darren. I've asked me if I could tell this story. Uh, he was he he was he'd served a life sentence in jail, and um, he, you know, he was he was basically a lunatic. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And 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 he, he had what they call I don't know I can't remember he called it something, but basically it's something where the guards the, the wardens couldn't come into his cell unless there were seven of them um, because of what might happen. Um, and, and Darren came to our encounter camp. He'd already become a Christian, um, so, but he, he came to our encounter camp, and he had, an, he had a profound meeting with God, and some demons were kicked out of him, uh, and he, he became free, um, and, uh, and he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Darren, this evening, is running our encounter congregation. Um, he's now the leader of that congregation, which I support him and help him doing that. But 
but it was that it was a moment at a camp. Um, I mean, there's, a, there's another guy that came to our, been to our encounter camp, and this is another guy that served a long time in jail. And and I don't know, I I've, I've been working with criminals now for a while. I never ask. I don't, I feel like I don't want to know what they've done. To be honest with you, uh, so I don't to this day know what Darren did to serve a life sentence, and I don't really want to know. Um, but this other guy, you know, he had huge mental health problems and challenges. Uh, and he came to our camp and he, got, he became a Christian at our camp. He got, he got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, he went back and he was due, like the week after the camp, he was due to have a meeting with all the professionals that look after him. And he had psychiatrists, uh, he had social workers, uh, he had counselors, all, all, you know, probation all these people that he would meet with on a, on a regular basis. And they looked at him, started conversation, and they said, what has happened to you? And he said, I met the Holy Spirit. That's what he said. And, uh, and, and they talked about it a little bit. And on his notes, this guy's notes, that they all they have to make their notes, they have to write it up. On his notes, they, the, 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 the probation officer said, we must not underestimate the power of meeting the Holy Spirit. That's on his notes. Um, and, and, and so, so th- these are some of the things. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I've, given you, I've given you the best stories. Uh, do you know what I mean? I've, <laughs> I could give you some bad stories. Uh, there's, hard, there's hardly been any fights at this camp. Uh, things like that. Uh, but, you know, so I can give you some bad But these are the good stories. What I'm saying is they come out of a group of people like you sitting in the presence of God, seeking him and doing what he says. Do you know what I mean? You know, gather people. That's what God said. Gather people and I'll show you what I can do. I rang some friends and said, I'm thinking of gathering some people to see what God will do. And they said, yeah, I'll come. And that's how it's, that's what happened. Nothing more profound than that. Nothing more like, I'm not that clever to do anything better than that. I just want to encourage you. This is what God can do in a community like this when you, when you seek him. And, you know, I, I want to, what I want to do is I want to, I want to sort of invite you and encourage you to press in. Press in to what God has for you. And uh, he's, not, it's not, he's not looking for professionals. He's not looking for the people that have got all the answers. In fact, he's actually looking for the people that don't think they've got the answers. Blessed are the poor, is what he said. And the reason he said that is because the poor know they need him. Isn't it? So if you, you, know, if you think, I don't know what to do here. John, if you're now, you know, you're, the, you're, the, you're the main guy. Uh, do you know what I mean? It's good to know that you don't know what you're doing, right? <laughs> so, so take comfort. It's okay. Do you know what I mean? Because what you, what you want is you want to hear the voice of God and do what he says. We can, over, we can overcomplicate it and we feel like, I've oh, got to have a five-point plan, got to have a strategy, got to have this, that, this thing. No, what you've got to do is listen to the Spirit and do it. Because things will come from that. Miracles will happen when we listen to the Spirit and we do it. I mean, I was just chatting to Andy and he was saying, wow, it's a bit of a funny place. Because you've listened, you know, a bit like Abraham. Go to a place I'll show you. I don't know. (laughs) What's it going to be? I don't know. (laughs) But that's obedience. And God blesses it. God does stuff. What I want to do is I want to sort of move on from that. I want to encourage you to press into that. I want to share with you, actually, uh, this was just just the the, the build-up. This isn't the talk, so you can start the timer now. Um, (laughs) So so, um, I I just want to share, like, five, so you can track the time, uh, five foundations that God has taught us through uh, working amongst the broken, the disadvantaged, the needy, um, that God is calling you to reach and, 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 and work in and see breakthrough and, uh, and miracles in this community here. Is that all right? Yeah. Great. So these are, these are, these are our five um, sort of foundations that we've learned. And, and God's called me and, and has been speaking to me about helping churches and planting churches on these foundations. Okay, so you can take them or leave them, but I'm going to share them anyway. Okay, I'm not suggesting they should become your foundations. I want to inspire you with these foundations because you'll have your own. Um, but uh, feel free to nick them uh, if, uh, if they resonate with you. The f- and three of them are from Isaiah 61. Okay, if you don't know what Isaiah 61, ha- have a look at it in your own time. Uh, but it's the, it's the famous one that Jesus quoted. Jesus went into the temple, they gave him the book of Isaiah, he opened it, the scroll, and it was at Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because he's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, to bind up the brokenhearted. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Do you know what I mean? And, I, and, and so the foundation number one for us, and I, and I want to encourage you to be inspired by it, is the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. Do you know what I mean? And, and if you want to see breakthrough, if you want to know the purposes of God, the call of God, and want to see him move in your life, it is because the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. No other reason. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. Okay? He's anointed you. And uh, I, I, I want to tell you that Jesus is looking for churches that do stuff that they can't do. do you, have you ever thought about this? Jesus... Jesus yeah, on, on one hand, it's quite a cruel thing for Jesus to say to a cripple to stand up and walk, isn't it? Have you ever thought about that? Stand up and walk. Well, Jesus, like, you know, can't walk. I mean, it's cruel unless you have power and authority such that they can walk, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? And he's going to, you know, he's asking you to do things that you can't do. He's asking you to renovate a building. You can't do that, can you? And you've got the money? <laughs> You can't do it. He's asking you to do things that you can't do because the spirit of the sovereign Lord is with He's either with you or not. All right? I want to argue that he's with you. Okay? You, you definitely hear from God a lot, don't you? Yeah? Do you know what I mean? I, you know, I don't know when it's as dangerous now, isn't it? Um, but you are going to get some words and, and they might not, some of us might think, what? Do you know what I mean? But you're going to get some words and I think it's important we listen. Anyway, um, and it's about the spirit of the sovereign Lord being on you to do supernatural things. Do you know what I mean? It's, it, the, the church of Jesus Christ, I think, in, in our culture, has lost its way a little bit. I'll say it quietly. It's not on the internet, is it? No one else is listening. We've lost our way a bit because we do what we think is going to work. Huh? We, we, we do pragmatic things. We have a sit down, we discuss it. What do we think will work? What will the people cope with? Well, rubbish to that. Do what the Spirit is saying. Do what the Spirit is saying. Not what the people will cope with, because you just stay the same. But there'll be moments of breakthrough. There'll be moments when you, when you, when you gather together. This is why I want, to, I want to see you sitting in a circle. And I want to see you gathering together as a community of believers that are trusting and believing God and saying, what are you saying to us, God? We will do whatever you say. Give, up, give, give our money away. Yeah, we'll do that. Go and pray for that person for healing. We'll, yeah, we'll do whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? I remember, I remember once I walking through town, sat, you know, and, and, and there, was a, there was a guy sat on a bench. I have, I have a bench ministry. Uh, and there was a, I, do, I do. And there was a guy sitting on a bench and I felt the Spirit say, go and speak to that guy. Uh, and I went and sat next to this young guy on a bench. I went and sat next to him. Uh, and, uh, and I said, if you could change, this is what I felt the Spirit had asked me to say. I said, if you could change one thing in your life, what would you change? He looked at me and he said, everything, mate. And, um, and, I, and I said, go on, tell me about it. And he, t- he just let it all out. He was, he was about 14, should have been in school. He was smoking a lot of weed. Uh, he's, he's, there was... There was uh, discussions with social services about whether he should go into care. He was being abused. Uh, all of or everything was going on in this young guy's life. And we chatted a bit, and I felt compassion for him. I said, let me, let me tell you why. And it was raining. Do you know what I mean? Jesus was asking me to do evangelism in the rain. Anyway, and, 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 and I said, let me tell you why I'm sat next to you on a bench in the rain having this conversation. I said, I believe in Jesus. And he said, don't tell me about Jesus. He said, I've prayed every day for three months for Jesus to do something, and he's done nothing. Oh. I don't, you know, you sort of, in a moment, you're flawed on that one, aren't you? Because you think, you, you know, you're thinking, I've got a time to pray, and Jesus will help you. Why well, he's been doing that, and Jesus hasn't done anything. So I looked at him, and I said, have you ever wondered or considered what he might do? Because, I mean, what is he going to do? For your circumstances. And I said, is it possible that Jesus might send a funny looking bearded man to sit next to you on a bench that's lived your life, that's been beaten up by his dad, that's, that's, that's had, going through all of the things that you've just described, every one of them I've been through. Is it possible that Jesus might send someone like that to sit next to you on a bench and show you there's another way? Tears. Yeah, it's possible, isn't it? Maybe, maybe he has answered my prayer. 
I held his hands and we prayed. I've never seen him again, uh, but I can tell you those moments are powerful. Those moments are important. And those moments come when we acknowledge the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Point number one, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you. Why? Because he's anointed you to preach good news. There is a content to our message. If you, are, if, if you want to do anything in this community, let me encourage you, whatever it is that you do, there's a message that God is calling you to preach loud, boldly, and clearly that mankind is separate from God and Jesus has made a way to reconcile man to God. And that is the, that is the, 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 the most powerful and most pow- you know, important way that you can serve this community by, re- by, by helping them get reconciled to their maker. Isn't it? And he's given you a message. And I know most of us don't like it. I mean, we like the message, but we don't like preaching it, do we? We get a bit embarrassed. Anyone get a bit embarrassed? Yeah, we do. Yeah, we all do. I mean, I'm, I'm probably one of the, like, you know, more, more crazy ones that likes to speak to people on the streets. But I get embarrassed every time. And, and Jesus asked me to speak to another guy on a bench two weeks ago. And I was, I was arguing with him about it. And I said, no, I don't want to do that. I'm pre- preparing a talk, Jesus. Stop interrupting. Um, and I bit. I did speak to him. And I... A, a wonderful thing happened, um, which we haven't got time for. But, um, well, he's now our drummer in our church. That's all I'll say. Um, and and um, so he's given, you a, he's given you a message to preach. And I, and I just want to encourage you, even if you don't feel like you're an evangelist, you don't feel like you're the one, I, I encourage you to get good at telling people the message. Give the reason for the hope that is within you. Okay, so the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on you, number one. Yes. Um, number two, to, to anoint you to preach good news. Number three, to the poor. I want to encourage you. I, I, unashamedly, God has sent me to the poor and to the broken, to the disadvantaged, to those that are lost. Okay. Now, um, I believe he sent you to the poor, uh, to those that are lost. Not exclusively. We can preach the gospel to anyone, can't we? Right? But I just, you know, and, and not only that, but it is actually a New Testament mandate to preach to the poor. When, when um, uh, Paul was checking out his apostleship, he, he had to go to the big cheeses in Jerusalem uh, to check out, you know, he, he said, I know, I know I'm an apostle. He's like, I was, he was confident, but just so they know I wasn't running my race in vain, I'll go and check out my apostleship to the big cheeses in Jerusalem. And they gave him the right hand of fellowship. Whatever that looked like. I don't know what the right hand of fellowship is. I'd like to have it one day. Uh, gave him the right hand of fellowship. And the only thing that they were eager for him to do was to care for the poor. It's the only thing that they were, you know, I mean, they could, I mean think about it. This is the gospel going from Jews to Gentiles for the first time. It was a big, it was a big moment in the, in the church of Jesus Christ. Uh, and, and they could have said lots of things. You know, make sure you, you know, have worship at the beginning of your service. Make sure, you know, make sure you get up early and pray. I mean, he could have said all sorts of things. No, no, make sure you remember the poor. So I encourage you, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on you to preach good news and to, and to, to the poor. He sent you specifically to the poor and the broken. And uh, so those are the first three. And then the next are from, a, from different scriptures. We're going to rattle through this in no time. And in a minute, John's going to come and prophesy over everyone. Is that right, John? Some of some. Um, so, so um, I was me just checking out whether he's got anything. Have you got some? Are we good? Yeah, got a few things? Great. Um, <coughs> that was our code. You didn't, you didn't spot it, did you? Um, so, so uh, the, the, the fourth one um, is from Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 12, 23 says this, and it's talking about the body and many parts. You know, we know the scripture. You know, it says the body is made up of many parts. The eye can't say to the foot, I don't need you, and so on and so forth. And it, and it goes on and says, and the parts we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat with special modesty. He's the kind of community that Jesus is asking you to build, I think. Certainly the kind of communities that he's asking me to build is that, is that we honor those that feel the least honorable. When someone walks through these doors, or the doors in your nice new building when you got that done, and anyone walks through those doors, and if, and if they feel the least honorable, then they're the ones that get the front seat. They're the ones that get the comfy seats at the front. I have noticed that. Comfy seats at the front. Yet you're still sitting at the back, some of you. Anyway, um, you know... But, but we want to, we you know, it, it's easy, isn't it, to welcome someone that we think, oh, you're, you're, you're like one of, the, one of the good ones. You're one of the keen ones, you, you know. But the person that smells the most, the person that is, is 
you, you know, that we think, oh, you're, you're going to be quite hard work. They're the ones that we, that we welcome through the door and say, you're going to get the seat of honor. I was, I, was, I was teaching on this in our encounter congregation. Our encounter congregation is, is made up of people um, from, I mean, you know, from dodgy backgrounds, most of them. Um, and uh, we work with people within addiction and so on. It's a church service, but it's, for, it's primary, primarily for those guys. And, and I was preaching on this, and this guy was stood in the doorway, with his, and, and he'd got a can, which I hadn't noticed. We don't usually let alcohol in. Um, and he'd got a can, and, um, and I was preaching on this. He said, and he said, hang on a minute then. You mean people like me? I said, exactly. And he, he thought, hmm. Put his can down. Walked in, sat at the front. So this is my church then? I said, yes, it is. And you are, you are most welcome. And he was smelly and noisy. I'm not going to lie, not going to, lie to you. Um, but this is the kind of church that Jesus Christ is looking to build, where someone like him can walk through the doors and be treated with dignity, respect, and honor. Do you know what I mean? It's easy to honor those that feel honorable. But Jesus is calling you to honor those that don't consider themselves honorable. Do you know what I mean? And here's the thing, right? When we do that, here's what happens. Those people become oaks of righteousness. Those people become your leaders. They are the ones that are going to shape this community. You walk, there's going to be some people that walk through these doors, and your first instinct is, mm. and you're going to welcome them and give them honor. And they are going to become leaders amongst you. They are going to become the ones. It's going to take time. Darren, who... who Served the life sentence. He's been on a life license. He's been supervision for the rest of his life. But all, will always be on a license. I mean, three weeks ago, his license got got um, his supervision got removed. So he no longer has to report to probation, and he can travel the world without telling anyone. First time um, in in like twenty something years uh, that's been the case for him. Uh, we've been discipling and walking with him for about eight years. Takes time. Takes time. But tonight, right as we speak, he's preaching tonight in our encounter congregation. Uh, do you know what I mean? And, and he would have been someone that you'd have thought, yeah, don't know. Don't know about you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was a bit scared of him, not going to lie. Um, so so um, we treat those that consider themselves least honorable with the most honor. Uh, fifth and final thing um, is from Thessalonians. This is the kind of community that I believe God is calling us to build. Thessalonians, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14 says this, And we urge you, brothers and sisters, to warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the, the um, disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. And, and, I, and I believe God is asking us to simply do that. Have, have, have the big conversations Warn those that are being lazy. Warn those that are being disruptive. Have, have a truthful, loving conversation. I, I can tell you, if Darren was here, he'd be laughing now. We've had some honest conversations. Do you know what I mean? It's been a, there's been some, some rocky roads. He's not always been my friend. Do you know what I mean? Um, but God is calling us to build a community, calling, calling you to build a community where you're going to have the honest conversations. Frank brutal, honest conversations. But he's also calling you to have conversations and, and he's calling you to uh, give, bring words of encouragement and support to those that are timid. Because there are people that need a bit of a kick up the backside, isn't there? Yeah? And there are people that need just an arm on the shoulder and say, you can do this. We'll walk together. We'll do this together. And all they needed was they lacked, I was like that. I lacked courage. I lacked confidence. Just needed someone to put their arm around me and say, it'll be all right. When I first became a Christian, I sat at the back of church for two years and just cried. Just because of all the rubbish in my life. Just wept, just cried. And the minister of the church, a guy called Andrew Leakey, you'll know, you'll know him, put his arm around me and said, it'll be all right. That's all he said. It'll be all right. And I just, I just, I just know that that strengthened me. Do you know what I mean? And God is calling you to be that for people. To put your arm around people and say, it's going to be all right. And then it also says to help the weak so to warn the idle, to encourage the timid, and help the weak. And the truth is, there'll be people amongst us that, are, that may be forever weak. I mean, we did a funeral a year or so ago for a lady called Rachel. 
And uh, she was a, she was, a, I mean, I'd say she was a heroin addict. She was an, an everything addict. Just anything she'd get her hands on. Uh, and we, we've l helped her through rehab and then not and then back and forth and back and forth. And here's the thing. She knew that we loved her. And she was a born again Christian. You know, she, she I mean, we never know. Cause it's not our place to judge. But I'm so confident she's jumping with the angels right now. Do you know what I mean? But, but we provided a community that didn't judge her, provided a community where she was helped. Do you know what I mean? And, and God is calling you to build that kind of community. I, isn't he? Yeah? Two people are up for it. Three. <laughs> Anybody else? Are we in? He's calling you to build that kind of community. So I'd like, I'd like to pray for us, if that's all right. Um. Because it's a challenge, isn't it? Anyone feel a bit like, man, this task is, is a big task. It's a mountain. Anyone feel like that? Anyone feel like, how are we going to get in this building? Well, we've just finished a building that we thought, man, everyone, you know, I would, I, would meet, I would meet with all the surveyors and the architects and all of that, and they would say things like, so what's your budget? And I'd say, <laughs> 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 do you know what I mean? Because uh, we didn't have a budget. We didn't have any money. Do you know what I mean? We're, and we're, and we're 1. 1. 1.8 million quid into that project and we've just finished. Do you know what I mean? We didn't have it. Didn't have the money. So, so you know, we're a bigger church than you, so we can do 1.8. I don't know where you are. It's less money to raise, but you can, you can do it. You can do it. Because Jesus is calling you to be a community together that do these things. John, have you got anything you want to... Thank you.